This episode of Headlock Talk is brought to you by... Austin-based company Naturally Hemp's and their new line of CBD gummies. These gummies are made with 100% baked-in, pharmaceutical-grade, non-isolate-based CBD. What we're talking about here is the entourage effect. The entourage effect refers to the stronger effect you get when combining multiple cannabinoids together as opposed to just CBD. Full-spectrum CBD or CBD distillate tends to be more potent and last longer, which is what we're talking about here. Unlike some other brands that use a spray-on CBD, Naturally Hemp CBD distillate is baked in so you know you're getting the full dose with each gummy. I personally use them for all kinds of things like sleep aid or muscle pain. And did I mention they taste great? They got five flavors, uh, strawberry, green apple, lemon lime, watermelon, and get this, the orange flavor has vitamin C in it. Ooh. So if this sounds like something you could go for, head over to your nearest Creative Sig vape shop and pick yours up today to see for yourself the difference Naturally Hemp's gummies can make in your life. On this week's episode of Headlock Talk Presents Wrestling Lore, I am joined by Mr. Rob Wilkins as we discuss the Saudi Arabian plane incident. Yes, we look at WWE's dealings with Saudi Arabia, and uh, yeah, it gets weird. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to yet another episode of Headlock Talk and Wrestling Lore. I am, of course, the uh, the Texas gentleman, Tanner Pruitt here, uh, and along with me, uh, another uh, good friend of mine. I'm happy that he's here, uh, wrestling journalist extraordinaire, uh, Mr. Rob Wilkins. Rob, how are you doing today? I'm good. I, I still can't get used to that. Um <laughs> It's uh, it, but I I do appreciate that. Uh, it's going good, man. I've I've had fun. I know. Uh, just in case people don't watch it right away, we we did that pro wrestling gorilla show, and I I had a blast doing that, and and uh, we're going from uh, positivity to a little bit of negativity, and uh, but it it there's a lot to this. Um, this is what we're going to be doing, and and I'm very glad that you uh, you're letting me be a part of this. Well, yeah, man. I'm glad that you've agreed, and I'm I'm glad that uh, that we were having an opportunity to talk about uh, one of the more controversial uh, subjects uh, this year, uh, or not of this year, but uh, of, of recent history. Uh, of course, we've all heard of the plane ride from hell, um, the 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 show that will be, uh, I guess, done by uh, Dark Side of the Ring. Um, you know, <laughs> the, they will be telling that story, but we're we're going to talk to you a little bit about another plane ride incident uh this one of course is the the saudi arabia plane incident uh from from wwe from back in 2019 um rob this one is still very fresh in the minds of a lot of people here but um there's been a lot said about it and not a whole lot verified this this one's been played pretty close to the chest from a lot of those involved yeah yeah definitely um I mean, going back from that that show, it was um, you feel for a lot of the wrestlers um, that were that were stuck behind, obviously, and then just everything that was going on. There was so much he said, um, he said, and well, in this case, because of Saudi Arabia, there's so much he said, he said stuff, mm. um, <laughs> and nobody really knows like what is true. I mean, the the only thing that really came out of that whole story that was true was. Uh, there was like a lot of disgruntled wrestlers, and I think that following Monday they had a they had one of their very I guess at the time rare like talent meetings like at the next Raw, and um, I know it was reported that people said or it was reported that Seth Rollins was very like very corporate raw raw, but then he actually came on the record and said that wasn't true, and other wrestlers said that never happened. Um, so WWE was like at that time, there was a lot of like, like weird things going on. And Mm. I mean, this was right when AEW was starting too. So there was like a lot of people that were just like, kind of did not like WWE going to Saudi Arabia in the first place. Mm. But then you add stuff like this where they're, they're basically in a way, in my opinion, they were just basically saying, 
to some of their talent, like, yeah, you're not as important as some of these other guys. So um, it's one of those moments that puts a bad taste in a lot of these guys' uh, mouth, uh, mm-hmm. mouths, rather. And uh, it's just a fascinating story, everything that went down, at not only at that that show. I mean, the show wasn't really critically... Those shows are never critically acclaimed to be great, but this was kind of like a... They're just kind of going out of their way to please Saudi Arabia. And, it, mm. and I mean, that wasn't good in the first place, but such a such a weird week, I guess, or a few days for WWE and WWE superstars then. Oh, absolutely. And, and, you know, obviously this, the event that we're going to talk about, uh, is, is of, of, of enormous nature, but obviously we need to, to also give a lot of context here, uh, as well. Um, so, uh, let, let's, let's go in the way, way back machine. Uh, it, it's been re- reported uh, that in Jan, not January, uh, December rather of 2013, um, that WWE would start holding shows in Saudi Arabia. Uh, their their first show being in Riyadh in 2014, and then later they would do shows in Jeddah um, in, in 2015. So there was already some momentum going, uh, obviously. Uh, and and later on in 2018, as part of uh, a partnership with Saudi Arabia and. Saudi Arabia's uh, Saudi Vision 2030 um, program. Uh, WWE would choose to be a part of that as a way of, um, I guess, uh, I'm I'm trying to find the right words uh, so that we don't get in trouble. Uh, But Saudi Arabia 20, uh, Saudi Vision rather 2030 is basically um, from the Crown Prince Mohammed uh, bin Salman. Uh, Salman, rather, uh, and his wanting to, uh, I guess, give exposure to to Saudi Arabia and, and try and get uh, provide positive promotion uh, of Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia as a country uh, mm-hmm. to promote tourism and and uh, healthcare and education and infrastructure and you know uh, all these things that. Um, I guess would uh, diversify Saudi Arabia's portfolio. Um, but uh, you know, this move was roundly criticized uh, by a lot of different folks um, in, in the media, as well as internally within WWE from what I'm aware of. Yeah, there, it was, uh, it was never a popular choice um, to do this, but um, the one thing that, um, and I, I, I'm not trying to be a WWE apologist when I say this, but mm. um, I think what people need to realize when it comes to WWE, things have com- can, we all know, like product wise, it has completely changed. But the one thing that I don't think people understand from a business aspect, Vince McMahon's biggest job, technically, other than making sure he gets a product out, is to the shareholders of the WWE. He has to do, he has to do the, the right things and even though are like from a business perspective as much money as they're making um when you think about it like on the good and the bad if you're like a businessman or a business like you're you see that money and you think about your your stockholders it i i know i know like how i feel about it but i understand from a business standpoint where wwe is coming from with that amount of money they were getting per show. So, Oh oh, yeah. Um, and, and at that time you had so much going on with the, um, and I, I, I forget his name, but the Washington post reporter, um, there, that was still a big, and and it still is a big deal. Uh, Khashoggi, I think, uh, um, Jamal Khashoggi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who, um, was killed at, uh, reportedly killed at, or no, they did say he was killed at an embassy. Mm-hmm. Um, and just stuff like that. And that was one of the, the, that was what started getting WWE's attention. Like, I mean, they, I mean, John Oliver, uh, who has the show on HBO, even he brought it up, um, about WWE going to Saudi Arabia. They, I mean, people tried to make it a bigger deal. Um, and for a little while it did get pretty like heated for WWE. I mean, they had a lot of eyes on them and, um, I think what helped, um, without getting very political about this, is I think what helped during that time is uh, 
Vince McMahon's ties with um, with politicians um, at that time. So he he was never really told not to go or anything like that, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, and we never really heard anything like um, from an aspect of uh, when you think about it, like. I've I've heard, from what I know, is um, the United States government did get involved at one point with mm-hmm. this plane ride with because I mean they had they had American citizens who were not allowed to leave, <laughs> so they they did get involved somewhat, but to an extent I don't know how much, um, but it, it was just an absolutely crazy story and and it's fascinating. There's there's so much out there that um you you get a lot of wrestlers to have come out and talked about it like um andrade has been very vocal been vocal about it in the past um carl anderson and luke gallows have talked about it and um i mean these guys these guys were still um like when andrade talked about it he was still with wwe i don't know um i believe carl anderson and luke gallows were already already left but they weren't nearly as critical about it as like Andrade was or uh, even Luke Harper um, rest of soul. Um, so there's just so much about this story that is fascinating. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll definitely talk about, like I said, the, the plane ride from hell is, is the focus here. Um, but uh, of course, with WWE's leanings with Saudi Arabia, uh, there, there are other controversies to, to, to talk about uh, to just give more context here. Uh, even before uh, the Saudi plane incident uh, is concerned, I'll bring up three different ones here. Uh, first, we'll talk about uh, the, the women's rights issue within the, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia and, and WWE and, and how that how that goes together. Um, Triple H is is saying of quote um, I understand that people are questioning it uh, being of course uh, I guess the freedom of talent and and and, and cultural differences with Saudi Arabia, um, but you don't have to understand that every culture. Uh, but you, but you have to understand rather that every culture is different, and just because you don't agree with a certain aspect of it, it doesn't mean it's not a relevant culture. Um, you can't dictate to a country or a religion about how they handle things. But having said that, WWE is the forefront of a women's evolution in the world, uh, and uh, what you can't do is affect change everywhere by staying away from it. While women are not competing in the event. Uh, we have had discussions about that and hope that in the next few years there will be. Uh, this would have been regarding one of the first shows. Mm-hmm. Um, there were changes in Saudi Arabian law uh, in 2017 that allowed women to attend these events, the WWE events, uh, uh, as well as others, as long as they were accompanied by a male guardian. <laughs> um, again, this is, as Triple H pointed out, cultural difference, yeah. not I'm not uh, uh, besmirching it. I'm just pointing it out. Um, obviously, here in the West, we might find that to be a bit odd, but that's but that's their culture, right? Um, let's see here. Uh, there was, I believe, who was it? Uh, I, th- I think it was uh, in 2019, uh, Lacey Evans and Natalia uh, yep. were, were going to compete at Crown Jewel. This would be a history-making event. Uh, they would compete at Crown Jewel, both in uh, full body suits and T-shirts instead of regular attire, uh, so as they could comply with uh, Saudi Arabians, uh, Saudi Arabia's uh, dress policy, I guess, for women. Yep. Um, it, WWE would celebrate this, uh, you know, as as a major watershed moment uh, in history. Um, uh, obviously, the the match itself. Uh, <laughs> reportedly fairly average yeah. uh, last I remember um, but yeah the uh, matchup wasn't the matchup wasn't really um, yeah the matchup was it was like eh, you know and and mm. I think the biggest thing like you said was the fact that it happened there mm. it's um I mean I, I will say in terms of um, a in terms of wrestling match, it's 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 fine. It's, it's a fine match, um, but 
um, as a moment, perhaps it, it's, it's going to ring a lot more true of how significant it is that women even competed in Saudi Arabia. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, no. Like what you said, I, I, I was agreeing. And... Uh, no, but yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting uh, that there, there were that kind of, um, there was that kind of situation there. Um Obviously, you had mentioned it earlier, uh, Rob, the, uh, the death of Jamal Khashoggi, where he was killed, um, allegedly, by uh, S- uh, Saudi Arabian um, uh, uh, assassins, essentially. Um, there was a lot of calls from both political parties, uh, Democratic and Republican here in the U.S., um, who criticized WWE and did not want them to go and compete uh, in, in Saudi Arabia, um, even as far as a Democratic Senator uh, Bob Menendez urging the U.S. government to pressure WWE into canceling uh, the event. Yep. Um, so, yeah, uh, this event did go through as planned. And uh, uh, after the fact, uh, speaking with Sky Sports, uh, Stephanie McMahon did say that it was an incredibly tough decision given the heinous act, but they said that in the end it was strictly a business uh, decision. Um, so, again, at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, it was all about you know WWE's um, desire to continue to make money and do business with Saudi Arabia, right? Yeah, exactly. And and um, and like I stated, like at the beginning, you know, when it comes to how much money was involved and what Vince has to do for mm-hmm. uh, stockholders, I mean, that's his, that's his uh, responsibility um, for that company. And um, it, uh, it was definitely a decision, though. And um, it was one of those things where it was one of those things where they were damned if they did or damned if they do, damned if they don't, you know, so... Um, Rob, I'll throw you a little bit of a curveball here, and I, I hope that you can uh, work with me on this one here. But one of the big things that I remember every time a Saudi Arabian show was coming around, obviously there was kind of the dread knowing that <laughs> more likely than not, this was not going to be a top notch show. It was going to be filled with a lot of um, uh, wrestlers from the olden days and these these matches that were supposed to be huge matches, but um, they always felt a little bit. Um, out of place, perhaps, uh, amongst uh, the, the rest of the story, uh, story arcs and storylines that WWE had running at the time. But a, a part of that is because there would be several wrestlers who would either refuse to go to Saudi Arabia or were told not to go to Saudi Arabia. W- w- what can you tell us about that? Yeah, um, so Tommy End, who, um, like, uh, Alistair Black was... Um, uh, was one of per- was one person that was told would not be going because of uh, the tattoos that he has. Um, a lot of the tattoos that he has have a uh, religious um, tone mm-hmm. uh, to it, and um, I don't know what I believe. I don't know what the laws are for um, Saudi Arabia when it comes to like tattoos and showing showing those. So I don't know about that aspect. But then you also had. Um, guys like Sami Zayn, who um, who has uh, who who is uh, has cesarean descent, um, and based based off of what has happened with Saudi Arabia and um, and Syri- like Syrians, you know, it's one of those things he did not want to be there for that, um, and he kind of got like support. Like it, it's never been on the record, but it's not hard to tie it together. But Kevin Owens wouldn't go because of, to support his best friend, you know, mm-hmm. um, in the, at least in the business, he w- he wouldn't go. So there's that. Uh, Daniel Bryan did not feel comfortable going. John Cena, I believe, went twice, and then the third time he's like, "Nope, I'm done with it." Um, and it just came down to um, most of the guys saying, seeing how much they got paid. You know, they got they got paid a ton to go and um that's why a lot of them went and it's one of those things where um i i don't blame them um i don't blame anybody i don't blame them like if you're a wrestler who wants to go get that extra money 
Um, mm. Or if you have a belief that you don't want to be there. Um, it's as a person who uh, who follows media and stuff, I understand. <laughs> I understand completely why some people would not want to go. Um, so it was just uh, it was a crazy time, and and it's one of the very few times where Vince McMahon has been okay with people not wanting to be in a show or like going to a show. He he under he understood. Now, was that an older Vince McMahon? that gets that now compared to the 1980s Vince McMahon, I would probably say so. Uh, mm. But, you know, it's one of those things. Lots yeah. of things going on there. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, I, I did look it up, and there there does seem to be some um, some legitimacy here to claims that uh, um, if you use any kind of religious uh, you know, iconography or particularly any imagery or, or quotes from the Quran or involving Allah or the prophet Muhammad, uh, th- those would be, um, deemed illegal, uh, or, or rather, um, at least very much disrespectful, um, to, to, uh, those in Saudi Arabia, as well as other, um, other com- uh, countries a- around the world. Um, yep. so there is, there, there is a little bit of, uh, uh, legitimacy to that uh, claim for for Alistair Black for sure, um, but yeah, I mean Kevin Owens, Alistair Black, Sami Zayn, um, as you put John Cena, uh, uh, Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan, obviously um, huge you know issues with uh, uh, going to Saudi Arabia. So I mean there is uh, there's quite a bit that you can touch on there as far as wrestlers who um, were were either told. Uh, not to go or refuse to go. And yeah. uh, that, that kind of brings us uh, to uh, our, our, our main talking point here, which is uh, Crown Jewel 2019. Uh, what a time to be alive, Rob. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, this show was headlined by a, a pair of matches um, on a, a very strange show. Um if you can believe it or not, the show opened with uh, Brock Lesnar uh, defeating Cain Velasquez, uh, a, a, you know, famous uh, UFC fighter turned pro wrestler Cain Velasquez um, for the WWE Championship in under a minute and thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah, just and it, you know, I think that's what really got the people more than anything that you had. You had Brock Lesnar beat Kofi Kingston previously, what, mm-hmm. a week or a few days before, mm-hmm. um, in just seconds. And then you bring in Cain Velasquez, um, who's supposed to be this big, like, star, and Brock Lesnar just took him out like he was nothing. And I mean, in a way, it was like, well, okay, if you're going to do that to Kofi, at least you make Brock take out a UFC star, like, really quick, you know? So, so I get that, but. It was uh, it was something else. I mean, I think going into that show, people were already negative, you know, going mm-hmm. because of because of uh, Lesnar. Mm. Um, and and I think, it, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but this would be the the first and only occasion in which um, <laughs> uh, Cain Velasquez would would be in a WWE uh, ring having an official match with yeah. the company. Um, yep, I believe so. I know he. I know previously before that he had a match with uh, triple like AAA, Triple uh, A mm-hmm. in, Me- in Mexico, um, which I think Cody Rhodes was in that match. But uh, yeah, he's only had uh, a few wrestling matches on the WWE one. He actually had two. I forgot he teamed with um, at a house show in Mexico. He teamed with uh, Cur- uh, Humberto Carrillo against uh, the uh, OC. Oh, okay. We'll so he, see yeah, I forgot about that. I. Uh, because I could remember, I'm like for for the life of me, I thought he teamed with Rey Mysterio once, and I just looked it up. Uh, a month later, he um, they kept him around for that Mexico City show. Mm. Um, but yeah, he he's had based on um, CageMatch.net, uh, which is probably the best place to look up like wrestling history. Uh, he's had four matches: two in uh, AAA, and then uh, two in WWE. Oh, well, there you go. 
Um, yeah, very odd situation there. Of course, Cain Velasquez famously uh, beat the snot out of, beat the brakes off of Brock Lesnar in the UFC to win the UFC uh, heavyweight championship at one point. And uh, this is, I guess, um, maybe Kane Revenge. Ret- returning the favor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And that's the thing about Vince. He has a tendency to uh, let the outside guys go go down like when they come in like for if they've worked with a different company or if they're like ufc per se Mm -hmm. um that way he can make his guys look better that was like the i mean if you think back about it that was one of the things about uh when brock lesnar came back and he wrestled john cena at um the pay-per-view after wrestlemania Mm -hmm. cena went over um and the same thing with triple h over sting um that made a lot of people mad but it didn't surprise me because that's the way vince has always been he always if you come from somewhere, it's his way of showing superior, you know, yeah, like, yeah, to, so he, he tries to humble you for sure. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, the next match on the card would, would actually turn out to be the longest match on the card. Uh, the, the OC uh, winning a uh, tag team, nine man tag team or nine team tag team, rather uh, tur- turmoil match. For the WWE Tag Team World Cup, uh, there was like qualifying matches, I think, on the weeks leading up to this here, and then, uh, of course, the OC wins the match by eliminating um, the, the Viking Raiders at the very end. Uh, match went a little bit over 32 minutes, <laughs> uh, which is uh, extraordinary. Very, very rarely do we get uh, matches that uh, tip over the 30-minute mark in WWE. Yeah. Um, yep. Mansoor then defeated Cesaro by pinfall in an incredible upset. Um, Mansoor is an interesting character, um, I, I think, Rob, because we, we really don't see Mansoor often. He's, he's technically an NXT talent, um, but uh, we, we rarely see him except for on these Saudi shows. Yeah, and, and, and that's actually changed the past two weeks. I believe he is now part of the WWE roster. Mm. Um He's kind of had a little, um, I guess, couple of segments with uh, Muf- Mufasa Ali. Um, and I know he's wrestled on 205 Live and stuff like that. So um, he's, start- he's starting to be seen a little bit more. I know he had a segment on this past Raw, I believe. So, uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, it was a match at... Um, he, yeah, him and Cesaro. It was actually, from what I remember, the best match of the whole show. Hmm. Well, there you go. Uh, so if you're going to go back and watch 2019 Crown Jewel, just fast forward to uh, Mansoor versus Cesaro. That's uh, that's the place to start here, uh, per, per Mr. Rob Wilkins. <laughs> um, next match on the card uh, was another one of the uh, the the most hyped up matches that you'll you'll see um, for this show. Uh, Tyson Fury, yes, the 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 boxer uh, Tyson Fury. Uh, would defeat Braun Strowman via countout in a, just over eight minutes. Um, goodness, <laughs> that would uh, that would not, uh, I guess, be too kind on Braun's legacy here for these uh, Saudi shows. Oh, correct. Yep, <laughs> that is correct. Uh, that Do one. You, I mean, when you bring in a celebrity, I, I usually think that the celebrity is going to go over. Mm-hmm. Um, so. That one didn't surprise me, but it was still like one of those things where you would kind of think that, in a way, you would think Vince would want to put his guy over, but mm-hmm. in a in a way, sometimes these these celebrities won't sign if they get made to look be look bad, you know. So I I get it in both ways. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and and I mean, what what do you remember about the Tyson Fury? Um, uh, you know, uh, WWE connection there because from from what I recall, I remember there's there's a lot of positivity there. Like Tyson Fury was actually like, hey, I could really see myself uh, doing this, and and there was a lot of uh, rumor circulating that uh, WWE wanted to continue working with Tyson Fury after the fact. Yep, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I mean, that was uh, that was something that a lot of people talked about, they were actually more happy to see him than they were Cain Velasquez. And, uh, I mean, I, I haven't been a big boxing fan for a, quite a long time now. Um, but it was one of those things where if it brings more eyes to the business, that's a, that's a good thing. Um, 
and it was it was good you know it was it was just good it was I, I wouldn't say it was a good match but i mean it was the way they worked it in and the way they put uh tyson over by beating braun with by count out they still protected braun um so overall it was it was good it was a good match um Meltzer gave it three and a three star three and a quarter i think for stars um and the only other match I got that was that that ten man that ten man tag match between Team Hogan and Team Flair. So those were the two best matches um, on the card. So oh, well, uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna get into those here in just a yeah. minute uh, for sure. Um, AJ Styles defeated Humberto Carrillo, um, um, retaining the WWE United States Championship. That uh, that was a match that happened. <laughs> it, it did. Um, Natalia, of course, defeated Lacey Evans via submission in the first ever women's match in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and then as, as Rob just noted a moment ago, team Hogan versus team flair team Hogan was comprised of, uh, Roman Reigns, uh, Rusev, uh, Ricochet, Shorty G and, uh, Mustafa Ali, of course. Yeah. Uh, Team yeah. Flair had Randy Orton, King Corbin, Bobby Lashley, Shinsuke Nakamura, and uh, Drew McIntyre. Um, so, um, yes, uh, so a resounding upset, it seems, for, for Team Hogan there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, main event time, and this is maybe one of the more controversial moments of the card. Um, <laughs> the, the Fiend, Bray Wyatt. Uh, defeated Seth Rollins via pinfall uh, to win the WWE Universal Championship in a false count anywhere match. Yes, uh, sir. <laughs> talk to me about this one here. Oh man, um, this was done because Vince McMahon knew he dropped the ball at Hell in a Cell just a few weeks prior, or maybe it was a week prior. Um, Seth Bray Wyatt was was extremely over. And I don't know, based off what I remember, um, he, he just didn't, Vince at the time just didn't think Bray Wyatt should have gone over um, for that belt. But after seeing how, um, I remember hearing that night from uh, a source that Vince McMahon almost knew right away that he messed up during that match at, at Hell in a Cell. And um, when they announced this, I think, uh, I remember talking to a few people and they said, Bray Wyatt's going to win because Vince knows he messed up. Vince knows this is the guy that needs the belt right now. So um, it was it was something. I remember just thinking, I'm like, like wow, you know, just uh, the fact that, the, the fact that Bray Wyatt, is the way he is the cre- the creepy at that time the creepy wrestler um going against Seth Rollins who was at the time a face and it just kind of showed that the again that the face thing doesn't really matter when it comes to pro wrestling you like who you like yeah no absolutely and and uh, I I do remember that Hell in a Cell match and I do remember um <laughs> I the 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 chorus of booze and just how how poor the match was and how how uh, how it went down. Um, obviously, the crowd was really really hot for the fiend, and um, yeah, it was not very well received. I think I even remember some AEW chants <laughs> as the <laughs> pay per view was was closing. Um, it's um, <laughs> It's uh, it was it was pretty crazy actually. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this is the the fiend, uh, beating Seth Rollins and 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 winning the title here. Um. And, and I think, uh, just to kind of keep it within headlock talk lore, um, <laughs> I remember me and my my co-host Stephen at the time we were talking about this match and how it was really kind of you know you you've really painted Bray Wyatt into a corner at this time with, with this booking, because he's supposed to be invincible, you know, but at the same time, you know, you can't just keep the title on him forever. Right. And not everybody, I mean, as, as over as he was, not everybody buys the character. So it is, it it is a little bit, uh, 
is a little bit strange um, that that they made this decision. But for for the time, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you one hundred percent. Exactly. I I couldn't have said it any better myself. Um. So <laughs> that's where we kind of get into the the, the nuts and bolts here of this particular show and, and what happens after the fact. So um, tell me, Rob, if, if you can kind of where you were or, or, or how, how you started learning about these issues with the plane and, and, and wrestlers starting to, I guess, social media trickling in and, and, and the wrestlers trying to communicate that they weren't leaving Saudi Arabia. Um, well, I remember first hearing it um, on Fightful Select. Um, Sean Ross Sapp sent a tweet out, I believe it was in the morning, saying that uh, some WWE wrestlers have not been able to leave yet. There has been um, delays that have been, I mean, it was, I, I can't remember if you put like s- suspicious in there, but it made it basically made people think like, what in the world is going on there? Um and that was that was the biggest thing. Um, that was definitely the biggest thing about it mm. that that I could recall at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, there was um, I, I I remember being I think at work at the time, and I remember there being a lot of um, uh, a lot of wrestlers tweeting uh, nice. about what was going on, and and uh, obviously. You know, as the days would go by, you would get uh, a lot of commentary from a uh, former WWE Spanish uh, announcer Hugo Savinovich, mm-hmm. um, who who works for for AAA. Um, yep. You know, things that that he would say about what the situation was was going through. Um, but there seemed to be, uh, if I can get uh, my my wording correctly here on this, because I don't want to. Uh, I mean, there's a lot. Of, <laughs> It, this is a difficult subject, folks, because not a lot is being made very clear by any side uh, as, as to what happened. But what's been alleged is um, that at certain points in time uh, throughout the day uh, that they were told that uh, there would be that they were going to be flying out, that there were no issues. There was just an, uh, an hour delay, a two hour delay that they needed to fuel uh, the 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 plane <laughs> um there was uh, mechanical issues uh w- was being reported to the wrestlers a-, a lot of different issues um i think there was even a rumor that had gone around and i have never been able to verify this but do you recall hearing a rumor rob about vince mcmahon being upset with the the, the saudi government uh, about uh tapings yeah there was because of the uh because he he didn't, from what I recall, uh, and my memory could be a little off on this, but I recall it had something to do to do with uh, financials um, that they didn't get paid or something like that. So uh, Vince McMahon cut the feed for I guess a few seconds or or something to that nature, basically to show like, hey, give me my money, you know, yeah. like. Uh, I don't know if you ever seen that episode of Family, or well, one of the episodes of Family Guy where where uh, little Stewie's walking around saying, "Give me my money to Brian, give me my money." That's kind of <laughs> what uh, that's what uh, old Vince was doing, uh, basically. From what people were saying, some people like some people said that wasn't the case at all. I'm actually going to go against that that theory of thought and say, yeah, he knew what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and it was overall, um, it was crazy. It was just absolutely crazy. Uh, yeah, man, it's it's been reported that there was an issue with that. Uh, Hugo Savinovich even claimed that the Saudi Arabian government had owed WWE millions of dollars uh, for two of the shows that the company had did. This is per the Hindustan Times, um, uh, which is a pretty reputable source as far as world news goes. Yeah. Um, uh, quote, it was a very difficult and dangerous situation because of the fact that Saudi Arabia had already been in a serious trouble uh, when they had uh, allegedly, I'll, I'll throw in the allegedly here, uh, for, for our sake, uh, killed that reporter in Turkey at the embassy. So the boys were a bit, uh, you know, not a bit, but they were very concerned, Hugo says, uh, per yeah. the Hindustan Times. Uh, Vince 
McMahon had left the country already and Brock had his own plane. So just to paint you a picture, wrestlers were being left on the other plane on the tarmac. Vince McMahon leaves the country um, on his own jet with his own uh, staff. And Brock Lesnar also leaves the country on his own accord. Yep. Um, so it it's basically, it boils down to, uh, money <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, it was, uh, it was just, I mean, go with everything going on, you know, there's, there was just, I, I couldn't imagine being like in a, in a situation like that. That'd be like me going to a, a business meeting and, uh, in the next town over and my boss saying, all right, uh, you continue to work on this or we, we finished everything, but, uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave and you, uh, wait here until I get to where I'm going Mm -hmm. or at least on my way. And then you can head out. Um, but then you get held back, uh, intentionally by all means, it sounds like it, uh, it, it was definitely questionable. And I know, I remember that there was, I, and I get it. I remember some fans were worried because you didn't really know, like what did somebody do something? Did, did uh, somebody, did somebody break maybe a law? So everybody was getting punished possibly. There were, there were so many different rumors of what was going on. So the fact that, um, the fact that the, the fact that they, they had to go through so much before they could get home is the biggest um, thing about this whole story. Uh, and I, I think we could agree on that. It's just mm-hmm. the pure hell that some of these guys have, have gone through. I don't know if you've seen the, like Brody Lee, um, AKA um, Luke Harper at the time, he, he posted a, a tweet or Instagram that said uh, his exact quote, he had his arms crossed. He, he, he would, he just looked like he was frustrated. He had a, uh, Angelo Dawkins right behind him looking at the camera like are you serious man like he he just had this like everything in life sucks let's get on this plane and go and uh and uh Brody or Jonathan Huber uh his he he posted on Instagram that said Larry I'm home I guess I didn't want it enough to pay for my own charter but I'm home now hashtag not top 20 so um yeah, so there was <laughs> there was a lot of uh, hostility with uh, some people. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely, and it's it's just very. Um, I mean, it, it's very interesting, and you see, like you know, uh, you know, other people involved in social media, like like Chris Jericho. Uh, you know, obviously replied to a bunch of, uh, of them saying that uh, he was glad that they that everybody made it home safe. Um, once they did actually get home, uh, yeah. there was. Uh, obviously wrestlers who were, you know, I think you had mentioned earlier, uh, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows talking about how frustrated they were by the whole experience um, that, that they had being just stuck uh, on a, on, on a plane, on a tarmac uh, waiting for, you know, for them to, to, to get back home. Um, uh, there is a, um, I'm looking at a, at a sports Kita article actually, that involved uh, David Bixbin of, of you know Dark Side of the Ring fame. Yeah. Um, uh, he was talking about how he had gotten in touch with a wrestler um, who was actually in Saudi Arabia, uh, Saudi Arabia at the time, um, saying, "quote it, It's a big, it's a big uh, shit show. Uh, we yeah. were all pretty certain that we were being held hostage," is what the unnamed uh, wrestler was saying. Uh, while we were sitting at the airport initially, we were told to line up to get on the plane. Then we were told it would be 10 more minutes. Then about another 30 minutes later, we were told it would be another 30 minutes. After an hour went by, we were, uh, we get another 10 minutes of be- being told this. Uh, no one is telling us what's going on or why we're being held. Then finally, we were told it's because they they have to refuel the plane. So it may take another hour. Uh yeah. The, the wrestler then admitted to being alarmed by the situation. Um, why why should they need to refuel the plane now when it's been sitting in the exact same position it was in when they dro- when it was dropped off uh, uh, when it dropped us off two days prior? The reason for charters is to get a group of people uh, out and on time and have everything ready to go. 
Exactly. Uh, end quote. Yeah. There were definitely shenanigans involved. And, it, you know, there's was, there was, there was something, even if it's um, alleged or, you know, it's just something happened. And um, it's, uh, in the long run, it's just thankful that everybody made it home. Mm. Well, yeah, that's that's exactly it. Um, I mean, it did take them a whole day, uh, of course, to do this. One of the things that had to happen was the NXT uh, uh, group of wrestlers would would show up on SmackDown uh, the uh, that day because there was no SmackDown wrestlers to to take part in the show. There's hardly anybody there, um, so they had to really put together something last minute. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. Um, we've even seen tweets here from, of, of course, Sean Ross Sapp uh, of Fightful, uh, that there was alleged rumors among talent that Vince McMahon got into a disagreement in Saudi Arabia, uh, though he was not able to fully verify or confirm it at the time of him tweeting that. Um, yeah, just a lot of uh, very uh, weird and interesting happenings. The wrestlers would make it back, um, you know, later, but it, it was a very large. Uh, ordeal here um, th- that happened with these wrestlers that were just seemingly left behind by Vince McMahon in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was like, and that's something else too. Like, I remember some people uh, made the comment, like, "Well, if there's one guy, like one seventy-year-old man, to go up to somebody in Saudi Arabia and just <laughs> like say, bring it, it would be Vince McMahon," you know. Um, it was uh, just something else, you know, like when you when you hear things like that, like when you hear the Vince McMahon stories that are out there, like the thing is, is I could picture Vince being that way. I think I think a lot of us can um, just based off what we know about the man. There was I, I, I know Vince has always kind of been one of those guys that says he doesn't live with regret. Um, I think he said that and I, I've heard him say it. I don't know how many times, but um if I had to guess, I would say deep down that might be a day he regrets. Not not necessarily doing the show, but getting his ass out of town, you know, just leaving. I I'm willing to bet he wishes he would have said, "Okay." Like if if he, if he knew what was going to happen, I think he would have obviously stayed. That's my opinion, but I could be I could be completely wrong on that. Hmm. Well, Rob, before we close up shop here, obviously we've talked a lot about you know the controversies of Saudi Arabia and the WWE. Um, obviously, we haven't had another Saudi Arabia show uh, because of the pandemic. Um, so I'll, I'll ask you a two-pronged question here. Will there be another show after this calamity? This was the last show that they did. Will there be... Do you think that there might be another one? And Yeah. Uh, Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, there there will be one, and I'm willing to bet it'll be this year. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm willing to bet it'll be in the fall. Um, what do you think will ultimately be the legacy of of WWE's tours in Saudi Arabia? I think they're going to be mainly not talked about, like in in realm of WWE history. I mean, they'll get promoted like when they're going over there. Um, for because of Peacock, for the for the most part, and even if it was for WWE Network, it would have been promoted for it. But uh, I think that's a, I think that's the biggest thing to, that I take away is um, is the fact that they they will continue to do these shows. They will um, find people that that will do them, even if they're. I mean, they've already proven that they're willing to bring people like do whatever it takes to to bend over backwards. I mean, they got Shawn Michaels to come out of retirement. And, um, if the rumors are true, it took more than, or it took nine, at least nine digits, according to what some people, some, from what some people have said, it took more than, it took nine, at least nine digits to get him to, to get him to do it. So nine. Yeah. So, I mean, some people say that Shawn Michaels got paid at one over one million to wrestle, to come out of retirement, um, and I could see like that. You know, I could see like a guy that has a family would say, you know what? Yeah, I did this, but a million dollars is a million dollars. That's going to go a long way for anybody mm-hmm. in any family. So, 
I will never doubt a man make, trying to make money for his for his family. Um, so uh, I think that was the biggest thing that caught my attention. Um, but yeah, I did try. Uh, I, I do. I do not watch uh, those Saudi Arabia shows more than once, so I can say that. Um, <laughs> other than seeing the Titus O'Neil highlights, I I don't really remember much about those shows i mean i remember i remember them but i don't remember like how some so and so won i didn't pay attention to that kind of stuff but um mm-hmm. it was it's interesting you know just everything that's that has happened i mean there's there's people that left that were extremely pissed i mean like i stated earlier the one thing that <laughs> that was good out of this whole thing was Getting to see Daniel Bryan and Adam Cole tear it up in a ring, um, and it's one of those things where, as I stated earlier, it's they're damned if they they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't. Uh, with that with that amount of money on the line, um, so I completely get it. Yeah, I mean, very well said, man. Very well said. Uh, let's, uh, let, let's wrap it up here then, Rob. Uh, thank you, of course, for, for coming by and doing this show. It's been an absolute pleasure, uh, to, to, to have you come on the show and, and, and participate in this little project of mine. Uh, where can people find more of your content on the internet? Cause I know that you produce a oh. lot of content. Uh, you can find me, um, every Tuesday and Wednesday I cover AEW or every Tuesday night on Fightful.com I cover NXT live. I do the live cover- coverage there on uh, Wednesday nights. Well, um, right now it's been on Fridays, but I do AEW Dynamite uh, live coverage on Fightful as well. I do a uh, weekly feature, or at least bi-weekly feature, called Selling the Merch, where I cover the outside stuff of pro wrestling, the merchandise, uh, t-shirts, action figures, autographs, stuff like that. And then uh, on shooting the sportish, I will be doing uh, covering a lot more baseball here pretty soon, um, and just ramping up here for the summer. I'm excited with uh, so much, so much stuff going on, and uh, it's awesome. And I truly appreciate you letting me be a part of this. Yeah, man. Anytime. Uh, like I said, you're you're one of uh, the the best minds as far as wrestling coverage is concerned that I know. You know, you're a great historian of the subjects, and uh, yeah, I, I wanted to make sure that uh, if if I'm ending uh, the headlock talk run, uh, that uh, I try and get uh, guys like you uh, in on the show, guys who really know what they're talking about. Uh, so I really appreciate uh, you coming on and doing uh, a, a couple of these shows now. And yeah. uh yeah, man. Uh, thank you so much for, for doing the show. We we appreciate everybody who's tuned in. Uh make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to not only the Headlock Talk feed, which will still be up. You can still go back and check out all the archives of all the episodes. Uh, you know, make sure that you keep keep listening to those. Um, and make sure that you're if you're listening to this on Love Wrestling that you subscribe there as well. The guys over at Love Wrestling are absolutely brilliant, some of the best uh in, in the business. And uh, yeah, check out all of our other content over at Shooting the Sports Ish. Uh, for uh, for for Rob here, I am the Texas gentleman Tanner Pruitt, and you guys take care. Have yourselves a wonderful rest of your day. Bye bye.